So the early 1970s, there was still a substantial Japanese American population coming to this school, attending this school, but that started to change? Yes, and the reason why it started to change was when they instituted the busing program, and it gave families an opportunity to leave Dorsey High School or the local schools and send their kids to other schools in like more uh, suburban or white areas mm. like Westchester or Palisades. Most of the families, Japanese American families, unfortunately, you know, sent their kids on that yellow bus out, the, out of the community. So the ties, keeping everybody together, tied down to, to, to Crenshaw, they started to loosen. Yeah, I think it sent out a, a large message like, you know what, this neighborhood is like uh, on its way down, mm. which I didn't feel. We were judges, attorneys, uh, tradespeople, there was actors, there were athletes, like yeah. you name it. Basketball was a big part of Nick's life. He played on the Dorsey High basketball team. And later, when he got back from Vietnam, Nick used his basketball chops to bring young people together to revitalize the Yellow Brotherhood and give Crenshaw kids a sense of culture and history. Wow, it's beautiful. <laughs> wow, they really pimp this place out. <laughs> Clearly, yeah. yeah. It's been a while since you've been here? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Look at all the championships. Like, yeah. Look at, Easy no. layup. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Oh, yeah. Money. Yeah. <laughs> Money. Money. I can't believe I did Money. that. <laughs> So you were, you were getting very political at the time. Did you look back and reflect on the lessons of the incarceration? Yes, yeah. yes. And um, how it impacted, you know, our community, myself, my family, my neighbors, my friends, the uh, second generation. What they wanted to do was like to provide for us to make sure that we never experienced anything like that, right. but in doing so, that uh, they really instill in us that uh, we actually had to be like more white. Then when you came back from Vietnam, you were sort of pushing back against that a little bit. Well, I think I pushed back against that my whole life. <laughs> right. But, but, yeah. When I was discharged from the service, in my history of being involved in the Yellow Brotherhood, started off at a uh, place called the Japanese American Community Service called the Jack's Office in Little Tokyo. It wasn't about do-gooders, but it was about doing good mm -hmm. and trying to make a change in our community, the attitude, working for a more of a just society, you know, human worth over monetary gain, to saying that, you know, hey, we're part of this community too that, you know, very much part of the community. Don't count us out because we have, you know, we have uh, also something to contribute. We received a phone call from some of the kids saying that there's going to be a fight after school between, like, the Asians and the blacks. Oh. So, you know, jumped in my car, went out there, and, uh, you know, and I just saw a group of, like, um, a large congregation of, like, Japanese American youth. I recognized one of the kids that was uh, in part of that congregation. And then we started saying, hey, why don't we all just go down to the YB house? And you know, so why don't you be there tomorrow? Yeah. So the next day, I mean, they came in mass. And you know, we started to like, you know, broke up into groups and start talking about like racism, things going on in the community mm -hmm. that there was really not a thriving geographic Japanese American community, that there wasn't a lot of like uh, involvement or activities for youth. So they readily like wanted to be part of something, uh, uh, organization. Yeah, so we had, you know, all together, like, you know, we were like a fist, we had a lot, we, yeah, we were powerful. 